This is Apostle Calvin Brown of Christ with Glorified Ministries. And welcome to another broadcast centered around the kingdom of God. God called me and my wife to preach the kingdom, the kingdom of God. And that's basically saying that Jesus is Lord. You know, Jesus is seated at the right hand of the Father in, in heaven. The earth he gave to the sons of men. But God wants to operate in his earth realm through his body, the body of Christ, mm -hmm. that is. And so we have to be yielded to God, open to God, so that God can operate in this earth realm. Amen. The Bible says that in the days of Noah, my spirit will not strive with man always. And God has always wanted to deal with mankind. And he's given us his spirit. He's given us his word amen and so we are in a time amen where we need god we need the hand of god we need god to move we need to have understanding from the lord we need instruction from the lord amen and so god has called me to tell you something about the times that we are living in it's important to know that the time because we're called to interact with God. We are co-laborers with the Lord. We're supposed to be one with the Lord. The will of God, the desire of God in this earth realm is accomplished as we yield to the Holy Spirit and the ways of God, the word of God. Amen. And, and that we are sensitive to know what is going on. We have a responsibility, so to speak, not just to live, but to live for God. Amen. And so we are in some you could say some perilous times, some interesting times, amen, because something happened, amen. You could say that it, it may have been pre-planned before, but at the beginning of the year, some things began to happen, you know. In, in, the, in the spirit realm, you know, things happen, you know, when when scrolls are open or horn is, is blown or, or God speaks a word, things happen, in the spirit, God is a, an eternal God, but we are in a phase. We are in a time which is called the end time. And, and God spoke to me. This is now over. It is, it is over a month. Uh, God spoke to me about the spirit or the anointing of Esther and the anointing of Issachar. He says, these two anointings is what he is releasing for this end time. Amen. So it's not anything strange or different. It is the same anointing. You know, there's different manifestations of the spirit and even the anointing, the way that God does things. Amen. And so the, the, the personification or, or, or the characteristics of the anointing that is needed for these last time is, is characterized in the book of Esther. And it is characterized in uh, uh, First Chronicles. 1232 talking about the sons of the sons of Issachar. Amen. And so let's start right there. Let's start with 1 Chronicles 1232. It says, And the children of Issachar, which were men that had understanding of the times, to know what Israel ought to do, the heads or the chiefs of them being two hundred, and all their brethren were at their command. Amen. So that first anointing that the Lord gave me, he said, was the anointing of Issachar to understand what's going on. Because when you are in a time that when things are happening and you don't know, amen, it, it could generate fear. You know, the, the more understanding you have, the, the, the less anxiety that you have. Amen. And God has not given us a spirit of fear. So he wants us to have understanding. So let's look at it again. The children of Issachar, they were men that had understanding of the times. And because they had understanding of the times, they knew what Israel, Israel, of course, is Israel, but it's a type of a church. It is Zion. Amen. So Israel, what the church ought to do, the, the heads or the chiefs of them were 200 and all their brethren were at their command. Amen. And so there would be no striving. What, whatever it was, the, the consensus of the understanding, the chiefs could relate this 
to the rest of the brethren, amen, and that they were ready to move at a moment's notice according to the understanding, the wisdom, the knowledge, and the understanding that the sons of Issachar had, amen. And so Jesus says to the scribes and Pharisees that you, you, you know the, the signs of the sky, amen, of the face of the sky, but you cannot discern the times, amen. The, the body of Christ, we are, we are good, amen, that it, when we are especially of the faith, so to speak, the faith movement, we, we know who we are. We know our identity. We know that we are the righteousness of God in, in Christ Jesus. We know that we are the redeemed of the Lord. We know that we are the healed of the Lord, amen. But we also are called to be um, baptized into the Lord Jesus. Amen. The Moses, the type, amen, that they were baptized into Moses through the sea and under the cloud. Amen. Our baptism is that baptism into Christ, baptism into the spirit, baptism into that prophetic ear to know what the Lord Jesus is doing in this earth and what the Lord desires to do and also what the enemy is doing. Most, many Christians, they don't want to deal with the enemy. The Bible says we're not ignorant of Satan's devices. Amen. And so, yes, we know the devil is under our feet, but we are called to be in relationship with the Lord. And in that relationship with the Lord, that, that we enforce, amen, that Satan is under our feet, amen. We walk in the authority and the dominion which is of the Lord, amen, as we relate to the Lord, as we commune with the Lord and we relate with the Lord. And that's where... The, the, the anointing of Issachar comes into play and the anointing of Esther. It is found in Esther chapter 4, verse 14. This is Mordecai speaking to Esther. He says, if you remain completely silent at this time, relief and deliverance will arise for the Jews from another place. But you and your father's house will perish Yet who knows whether you have come to the kingdom for such a time as this. And that was true. Esther came to the kingdom for that time. Amen. She was the one to deliver all of God's people. Amen. I said last time that Esther was not rippling necessarily with muscles, but she had a, an anointing which was of the Lord for that time. She had, and I'll get into this, a royal anointing. Amen. The Lord began to speak to me about Esther. Um, actually, it was years ago. I didn't even know it. I would pray in the spirit. And I would tell my wife, Apostle Vivian, I said, I keep getting Esther, Esther, over and over, Esther, Esther. We knew an Esther, <laughs> but I did not know that God was preparing for this time, for that anointing. Because there are things that have happened. We've been over them over and over. And there will be other things which will try to happen that only the anointing can deal with. The Bible says that it is the anointing that removes the burden and destroys the yoke. It is the anointing of God which removes burdens and destroys yokes. That's two things. Burdens and yokes. Amen. And so we know that Jesus has come to give us rest, but rest comes through revelation. Jesus says that upon this rock, I'll build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Rest, the, the, the revelation knowledge that Jesus is the Christ, amen. And the, the revelation knowledge that it comes, that comes from being yoked with Jesus by the Holy Spirit. <laughs> the Bible talks about Issachar, that he is like a strong donkey he, he is kneeling between two burdens, amen. Two burdens is that, that times, amen. The Lord told me specifically, he says that we are transitioning from a, a, a time, a season, amen, that time of King Saul, and we are transitioning into the time of the throne of David, amen. Of course, David being the type of Christ. And of course, we are we're supposed to be walking in the fullness of that knowledge. But there were certain aspects 
which said that we were not quite there yet. Amen. King Saul, we, we are transitioning from King Saul to King David. King Saul looked apart. He was he was tall. He was nearly seven feet tall. He was perfect in his in his looks. He was the desire. He was the one that the people set their desire on. But the thing about King Saul is this: he operated many times as if he wasn't anointed because he he feared. He did not trust in the Lord. Amen. And so he needed things to look a certain way. That to, to ensure him that everything was okay. He needed Samuel to be with him. Amen. He needed the people to be with him. The Bible says a thing about King Saul. He says, the Bible says that he would look, amen, when a person looked like they were mighty, that they had all the qualification, they were strong. It says that King Saul would gather that one to himself, to his army, to be a mighty man. But we know that David, David took those that was broke, busted, and disgusted, distressed, amen, and his anointing got upon them, and they became mighty men, amen. So King David, and we'll, we'll get into this, there's a lot to unpack. King David, he, he's a type of the throne of Christ. The Lord promised David, he says, that your throne, there will be no end. There will be someone upon the throne. Amen. And so we know about the kingdom of God. The Bible says that the kingdom of God in Isaiah chapter 9, that there will be no end. Amen. And so we are transitioning. Amen. From a, a, a time where people trusted in the way that things looked. Amen. And we're transitioning into a time where the ones, amen, that, that God would pick would not necessarily be the one that the people would pick, amen. And yet that is exactly what, what happened, amen. So we're talking about a royal anointing. The, the scripture that I read in First Chronicles 12, 32, it was when all the tribes of Israel was coming to David after the death of Saul and Jonathan. Now there will be a transition. And so these people are pledging their loyalty. Each tribe is pledging their, their loyalty. And each tribe, it tells how many people, how many um, tens of thousands are in the military or in the army in that tribe which came to David. And the Bible says that their hearts was knit with David. Amen. But it does not tell how many that were with Issachar. Amen. Because all of them, amen, that they understood what to do. The, the sons of Issachar would relate, would communicate to the tribe of Issachar, all their brethren. And so the connotation is that that type of understanding would get upon the, the other tribes, amen, also. Amen. The tribe of Issachar in the center, in the middle, amen, was, was like that. The first fruit, it is like that which touches the others, amen, to give them understanding. There was, there was, in other words, there was no striving, amen, with the words that came forth from the sons of Issachar because it was, it was known. They know, hey, they understand the times and they know what to do, amen. And then Esther, amen, the, the anointing of Esther was for that time, amen. And so Mordecai tells her, he says that God is committed to saving his people. So if you don't act or you don't respond, that deliverance will come. But I want you to know, and, and he's her guardian, and he, and he encourages her. He says, I want you to know that, that you have come into the kingdom for such a time as this. Amen. So we teach the kingdom. You have to understand the way that a kingdom operates. King Saul or King Saul reign was understanding the way a kingdom operates. Samuel says, listen, you, if you get a king, this is the way a king and a kingdom will operate. So that, that dispensation of King Saul was to learn the way that a kingdom operates. And yet when the Spirit of God departed from Saul, David still ran. 
from Saul. He was in wilderness. He was in deserts. He was in caves. So look at David, the type of Christ, as being the one anointed of God, that he was the one that was chosen of the Lord, a man after God's own heart. Amen. That, that he was the rightful heir. I'm talking about God's royal identity continuing in the earth. God's royal identity continuing in the earth was to be through David, the type of Christ. Amen. And not King Saul. Amen. Not the one that the people would have chosen. Amen. So the importance of Esther is that she represents the predicament, the same predicament that the church is in today. That there's a time where there is a threat against the church. Amen. And so that, that same predicament, amen, that Esther was in, it is the church is in today. We'll get into it that wicked Haman was going to destroy God's people. And God has raised up the anointing of Esther to stop it. Amen. Anointings deal with stuff. Anointings is not like, hey, you know, I'm anointed, you know, I'm so great, I'm anointed. No, anointings get down with the down and dirty, gritty. It deals with stuff. Amen. That, that people, amen, that they are hurting. They need the anointing. This nation is hurting. Amen. It needs the anointing. The, the Bible says if the foundations be destroyed, what can the righteous do? What shall the righteous do? God placed America strategically and he placed his foundations in America to affect the rest of the nations. The righteous foundations were found in America. You know, a country has to operate by constitutions and things like that. God put his righteous foundations in our founding documents. Or am I saying that the documents was the foundation? No, I'm saying the word of God backed up by the spirit of God is the foundation. Amen. But God moved upon people, whether they knew it or not, that God moved upon people, manifest destiny. Amen. To set those foundations in this earth for this time. Amen. And so there's an attack against the foundations of this nation. Amen. The righteous foundations. Amen. And so the church has to have understanding. The Bible says that it was, if it was possible, that even the elect would be deceived if it was possible. Amen. The Bible says the Holy Spirit guides and leads us into all truth. It should not be possible. <laughs> Man, if we walk with the with the Lord, Amen. That that if we had the leaders, that it was of the prophetic ilk that that could have that river of the prophetic and, and understanding, Amen. If we had apostles in their place, Amen. If we had the anointing of God in place, the when the Lord spoke to us about that that Esther anointing, that He did line upon line, He He put layer and layer of foundation. Amen. He made us to understand that that is necessary. He, he spoke to me about having understanding that that anointing of Issachar. He has prophesied over my wife that she is in Esther, having that anointing of Esther. Like I said, people say, you're getting off, you're doing something weird. Let me, let me read what the anointing is is even though it's personified in Esther and Issachar and even in David, the, the dispensation of the throne of David. In Isaiah chapter 61, it describes that anointing, that same anointing. Amen. Jesus, he read this in Luke chapter 4, he, he read that this anointing was pertaining to him. Amen. The spirit of the Lord God is upon me because he has anointed me. Now, people say, I thought the spirit was the anointing or the anointing was the spirit. Yes, the, the, the spirit is the anointing, but the anointing is rubbed on, smeared on. The anointing represents that which is chosen. In other words, what God chooses, amen, he anoints, amen, and he, he lets everyone know that this is my anointing. Amen. What God chooses, he anoints. The anointing is for service. Amen. The, the anointing, God is this. If you want to get to God's heart, then love his people. 
Amen. That if you're like Solomon, Solomon says, give me wisdom to go in and out before your people. Amen. I'm, I'm, I'm just a youth. God said, that sounds good. That sounds good, son. <laughs> I'm going to give you, I am going to give you wisdom and more besides. Amen. Because you get it. It's about people. Amen. So the anointing is to shepherd God's people. You're supposed to bind their wounds. Amen. You're supposed to guide and lead them in the way of truth. Amen. And so they are not supposed to be scattered. You're supposed to be able to see when the enemy is coming. Amen. And anointing to see when the enemy is coming. Amen. And not to flee when the enemy is coming. But that anointing to be like David. He says, listen. This uncircumcised Philistine, listen, that anointing, I, I've killed the lion, I've killed the bear, amen. I, I understand covenant, amen. And so that David understood the anointing, it's to deal with stuff. So Jesus says, the spirit of the Lord, God is upon me because the Lord has anointed me to preach good tidings to the poor. To, he has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, the opening of prison to those who are bound, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God. Now, God's vengeance is against the devil and the works of the devil. Get it? Get it straight. Amen. That you, you don't pray prayers against people. Amen. The vengeance of the Lord. The Bible says that Jesus is clothed, clad in, in vengeance. He, he loves to destroy the works of the devil. How God anointed Jesus. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power. He went about doing good. Good, we explain, is the good works. What God did from the beginning was good. What the devil did was wicked works. So God anointed Jesus. Amen. The devil comes down here, tries to mess up some stuff. God prepares an anointing. Amen. To do good works. To remove those wicked works. Not only that. The, the anointing establishes, amen, that the works of God are good. In other words, they are sanctioned of the Lord, amen. So signs and wonders follow the preaching of the word, amen, by the anointing, by the operating of the Spirit of God. The Holy Spirit is the one who brings the kingdom or, or he manifests the kingdom of God by removing wicked works and also giving understanding. The Bible says, that Jesus is made, he is, he is made the wisdom of God, and he has made the power of God. And so the Holy Spirit will simply declare Jesus, the wisdom of God. He will declare, he will explain, he will show forth the wisdom of God and the power of God. And so the, the day of vengeance of our God to comfort all who mourn. We, we are in a wicked world. If we did not have knowledge of the Lord and the comfort of the Holy Spirit, we would be mourning. Amen. And also by wicked knowledge, the devil presents a thing and says that this is the truth. Amen. And so we would be very heavy. Holy Ghost. If it wasn't for the comfort of the Holy Ghost and the anointing of God saying, hey, that this is not the reality of God. Amen. What the devil is presenting. I want you to know, and I'll say it plainly because some people, that they, they, they have not wanted to say things strongly and plainly. Amen. That that which was of COVID-19 was manufactured is a work of the devil. And that which is of the racial unrest is a wicked work. It is of the devil. The inspiration, the spirit behind it is of the devil. Amen. And so you could be fooled. You could be pulled into certain aspects of it because you said certain elements, they, they carry, it looks like righteous requirements of God. But the, Jesus told me when he called me into this ministry, he says, it, it's all about kingdoms, what kingdom they are of and spirits, what spirit they are of. I thought that was such just a, a simple message, but I found it to be true throughout this ministry. It is what spirit they are of. Yes. Amen. Yes. That, and, and what kingdom are they working for? They're trying to get fruit for a kingdom. Amen. You know, a tree by its fruit. Amen. So the, the tree, the roots will go to a kingdom. You, you cannot look at necessarily all the, the, the outward messaging. Amen. Because the devil can mimic certain messages even though he perverts the word. Every time the devil says the word, he perverts it. Amen. And so th there will be certain elements of messaging 
which will uh, invoke, amen, incite your emotions, amen, because we, we are made, amen, for a cause, for a purpose. We're also made to move with strength and energy and power. Amen. We, we are made for that. Amen. So you can be activated for the Lord and you can be activated for the devil. Amen. And so you, you have to understand the times that these are the last times. And you have to understand the, 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 the source. Amen. We've been through that. And I want to get into this, Esther, because I've been trying my best. But it is they, they are platforms. Amen. There, there, there are platforms where people allow the devil to operate. The devil promises them to raise them up in power and money and prestige. You know, there's places like Hollywood, even in the educational system. Not all, but I'm saying that there are platforms in, in the educational system where the professors that they teach communism and, and socialism as the as the way. Amen. And what does, think about the fruit of that. What does that do? It makes those kids, those children hostile to God. You understand? So there are platforms and, and people that they don't care about people. It, it shocked my heart how that so many people don't care about people. Amen. They, they do things for that lust, for the, for the money, the prestige, the control, the ability to control people. Amen. So God says, I'm raising up Esther and I'm raising up Issachar to bring forth the, the answer to answer this because the devil does not overpower God because darkness cannot comprehend the light. Amen. God is God. He made it all. It's, it's his heavens. It's his starry heavens. It's his world. Amen. God is simply dealing with people that he's trying to give understanding and an anointing to, to put the devil in his place. Amen. And so you, you have to understand how to war. The Bible says, why would the Bible says he, he teaches, he trains my hands to war. Amen. There's Christians that say well, warfare is over. Amen. No, the warfare is not over. You just got to recognize and put the devil in his place. We don't wrestle with flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers and spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. Amen. And, and so the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they're mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Strongholds, the casting down of imaginations, arguments, and every high thing which exalt itself against the knowledge of the Lord. That's what's going on. There is knowledge which tries to exalt itself against the knowledge of the Lord. It tries to get a hold of you. You have to cast them down so that there will not be idol worship in that high place. It will become a stronghold in your thinking if you give place to it. And so God says that he is releasing Esther. It's the same thing as Isaiah 61. I don't want you to think it's something weird, but it is personified, amen, in Esther, amen. My, my, my wife, I, I, don't, I won't speak for her. She has certain revelations and things that the Lord has given her and, and certain experiences, amen, about that, that Esther anointing when the time is right, amen, that, that she'll be able to deliver that. I can only say what God has told me. The, the, you have to respond to the predicament, amen, that the, the enemy is trying to silence the church. He is trying to silence the voice of the church. He is trying to remove the strength of the church. He's trying to relegate the church to being secular, worldly, that if you will not agree with that which is worldly, then you have no right to exist. Our right to exist, let me get, get it straight. Our right to exist comes from the Lord. Our seal comes from the Lord. Our documentation comes from the Lord. There is a higher authority. There's a higher government that, that we operate by. And you need to know that. When you're, when you're submitting to a government, make sure that you are, you, you are not dishonoring the government of heaven, the government is upon Jesus' shoulders. Amen. And so that we, there are certain elements found in Esther. That's what I want you to know. And so we'll go through some of them and, and we will link them to the time that we are living in. Haman was called in Agagite. 
Agagite. <laughs> That's in Esther 3.1. That means he's a descendant of King Agag. Amen. A direct descendant of King Agag, the very king of the Amalekites that King Saul refused to destroy when God commanded him to do so. Amen. So the Amalekites were the enemy of the Lord. And, and I'll tell you why they were the enemy of the Lord. But, but this Haman is a principality. Okay. I want you to see. He represents the demonic. He is a direct descendant of the one that God told King Saul to take out. Amen. Now, you take out a person, that spirit is, he, he looks for another host. Amen. He looks for an opportune time. Amen. We're supposed to keep the devils under. So King, I mean, Haman was an Agatite, a descendant of King Agat, which was a principality who looked for an opportune time to destroy God's people. Now, God was very upset, very upset with the Amalekites. If I have a time, I'll read a couple of these. Um, 1 Samuel, I won't read this, chapter 15, 1 through 3, that God told Saul to destroy that, the Amalekites. He says that, and this is, this is my wording com com compared to other scriptures, a, a, a holy destruction. Everything was devoted to destruction. The, the people, the merchandise, everything, the animals, Everything was devoted to destruction. Amen. It is, it is the, 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 the righteous requirements. In other words, it is what was necessary to fulfill a righteous requirement for the evil of people being yielded to that type of devil. Amen. To, to give that type of devil a place, it was, it was what was required. Also with the Lord, this is... This is King Saul. He's already had one victory. The Lord is, has given him a victory. And so God has given him instructions for another victory. He says that this is part of your anointing. If you can obey me, he says, that, that this can kind of solidify your anointing. Well, King Saul had already disobeyed he, by doing a sacrifice that God said don't do. So this is the second disobedience of King Saul that, that he... Um, he allowed King Agag to live and he kept back the best of the animals and things. That he had a lust, he had a desire. So let's look at uh, a couple of the scriptures where God was so mad at the Amalekites. Amen. In Exodus, in 17, Exodus 17, praise be to God. We'll just read uh, verse 8 through 16 very quickly. Amen. Now, Amalek came and fought with Israel at Rephidim, and Moses and Joshua said, and Moses said to Joshua, Choose us some men to go out and fight with Amalek. Tomorrow I will stand on top of the hill with the rod of God in my hand. So Joshua did as Moses said to him and fought with Amalek. And Moses and Aaron and Hur went up to the top of the hill. I want you, there's certain types and shadows. So that Moses is on the top of the hill, which is like the hill of God. He's on, he's on the top of the hill. He's in this earth. He's getting his strength from the Lord. Amen. And so it was when Moses held up his hand that Israel prevailed. And when he let down his hand, Amalek prevailed. But Moses' hands became heavy. So they took a stone and put it under him, and he sat on it, and Aaron and her supported his hands, one on one side and on the other, one on the other. And his hands were steady until the going down of the sun. So Joshua defeated Amalek and his people with the edge of the sword. Now, this is what God says about Amalek. He says to Moses, and the Lord said to Moses, write this for a memorial in the book and recount it in the hearing of Joshua that I will utterly blot out the remembrance of Amalek from under heaven. And Moses built an altar and called its name, the Lord is my banner, Jehovah Nisi. Yeah. 
For he said, because the Lord has sworn against the devil, the Lord will have war with Amalek from generation to generation. Now, we know that there will be a rapture. Amen. We'll get out of this thing. But until we get out of this thing, until Jesus, if Jesus tarries, there will be war with Amalek. So you got to have a heart for war to deal with that spirit of Amalek that God has sworn that for what he did. And one more scripture to deal with, to tell you what did Amalek do that made God so mad. Deuteronomy chapter 25. Deuteronomy chapter 25. Amen. Verses 17 through 19. Amen. This is Moses. He said, remember what Amalek did to you on the way as you were coming out of Egypt. How he met you on the way and attacked you Attack your rear ranks. Some of the translations says that he ambushed them from behind. All the stragglers at your rear, when they were tired. This is God's, listen, come unto me, all who labor and heavy laden, I will give you rest. So the, the, the devil is looking for those who are weary. Those that were on the behind, behind that, they were, that they were weary. Amen. They were tired. And he says this, Amalek. He did not, they did not fear God. In other words, God told them, don't mess with them. But they had no fear of the Lord. It says, therefore shall be when the Lord your God has given you rest from your enemies all around in the land which the Lord your God is giving you to possess as an inheritance that you will blot out the remembrance of Amalek from under heaven. You shall not forget. Amen. And so this is, like I said, this is that demonic realm that you got to deal with showing up from generation. The devil knows that his time is short. He looked for an opportune time to attack God's people. Amen. The Bible says that woe to those who, who, who are, the Bible says that, that at ease in Zion. In other words, that you're not spiritually alert. You, you're called to be watchmen upon the walls, amen, from, from a prayer standpoint and from a spiritual standpoint, that your spiritual eyes, open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Your spiritual eyes are wide open, amen. And not only that, God always lets you know in advance, amen, that those that are connected with the Lord, the Lord will let you know in advance what the devil is doing. The devil does not have the advantage. I don't care what it looks like. Amen. All we have to do is operate in the anointing that God has given unto us. Amen. And so in the book of Esther, I, I will just tell you, just, just read the book of Esther. Amen. Because we're just going to hit certain points as we try to get out more and more layers of what the Lord has told me. Mordecai, he was very spiritually perceptive and alert. He was on the forefront of detecting plots against the kingdom. Amen. The first was that, that the assassination attempt against King Xerxes, that was Ahasuerus. That there was two eunuchs. And somehow, I, I, sometimes you read stuff, but the, the, there is revelation when you read. Somehow Mordecai knew about this attack. The Bible says that he knew. He intimately knew. The, the connotation was that he had discernment. The, the Lord opened his ears. It could have been that when they were talking, that, that, that God magnified that, that the sounds. He was able to hear. Amen. He was operating spiritually. He was spiritually perceptive against plots and attacks against the kingdom. Amen. And that was found in Esther 2, 21 through 23. Amen. He also recognized what spirit Haman represented when others were bowing down. He would not bow to wicked Haman. Amen. And so there's there's a lot there. And I hope you catch that. He would not bow. That Mordecai knew what spirit. He, he knew what that devil was. He knew what spirit that was. He would not honor that devil. Amen. He was spiritually alert. Now, others would bow <laughs> and others would tell Haman that Mordecai wouldn't bow. In other words, others in the kingdom would tell off on Mordecai. 
Okay. I, I want you to get that. That Mordecai, Mordecai is not bowing. And so there, there was a spirit that would tell off on <laughs> that Mordecai refused to bow. Amen. Esther walked in boldness because she was loved. <laughs> Esther walked in boldness because she was loved by the ones who covered her. Amen. Let's look at uh, 1 John. You say, what does that have to do? Because that perfect love will, will, will cast out the fear. When you know that you're loved, amen, you can, you can be bold, amen. Holy Ghost. In 1 John chapter 4, verse 17, love has been perfected among us in this, that we may have boldness in the day of judgment. And a lot of people think that this is in the end, and it does can represent in the end. When we are judged, we get rewards. Christians get rewards before the throne of Jesus. It says that we will have boldness in the day of judgment, but there is also a day of judgment. The devil will test you, amen, to see if you are of faith. That is your day of judgment, okay? You got to have boldness. I've seen it several times. The devil will try you. If you say, oh, I believe God, I'm going with God all the way, amen. I'll never deny you, Lord. <laughs> the devil will test you. You will have a day of judgment to prove if that which is in your heart matches that which is in your mouth. Amen. As the man thinketh in his heart, so is he. The heart is the real you. And you will be put to the test to live out of your spirit from your heart. Amen. The, the most, the, the best people, the, the, the best people to be around, good and bad, are, are people who are heartfelt, who, who operate out of their heart. What is in their heart is who they are because you, you know what you're dealing with. <laughs> Amen. That is another thing that God is dealing with in these last days. It is the spirit of hypocrite, being a hypocrite. Amen. God will bring things to the surface. That, that, that those that say, Lord, Lord, it would have to equal that. You will have an opportunity, amen, for the things that you say that you believe in that to show that you actually believe in them. And so it says that you will have boldness in the day of judgment because as he is, so are we in this world. We represent the Lord in this world. We operate as him. The church operates as the Lord. That we have the body of Christ as long as we Jesus is our head and we're yielded to the lordship and headship of Jesus, we can operate as Jesus. We can receive that anointing, amen, to operate as Jesus. It says, verse 18, there's no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear because fear involves torment. But he who fears has not been made perfect in love. Now, Esther, that she had to be shored up and the reason that Esther was able to move with such boldness is was because she was loved. She was, she was an orphan. Mordecai adopted her and, and became her guardian. Amen. He was her older cousin. And so he covered her. Amen. And he loved her. She did not miss out on having parents because of the love of Mordecai. Amen. And also, in the, when the royal anointing covered her, when she was chosen to be queen, amen, that she was a partaker of the royal anointing, that when she had favor with King Xerxes, that she could approach King Xerxes. His verbiage to her was like, I had... I have nothing but favor for you. I have nothing but love for you. That I will give you whatever you ask up to a half of the kingdom. Signifying that together, amen, that they were to rule over a kingdom. Amen. Together. That they were to rule over a kingdom. Amen. The church that, that we are espoused unto Jesus. Amen. The church is supposed to be that, that bride of Christ. Amen without spot or wrinkle or blemish or any such thing. Together, yoked to Jesus by the Holy Spirit, we are in rest, amen. Jesus is the ox of strength. We are yoked 
unto Jesus. Amen. We, all his victories we get. Amen. He's the captain of our salvation. All of his inheritance we get. Amen. So he has given us the kingdom. Be of good cheer for it is your father good pleasure to give you the kingdom. You have the kingdom, but you cannot rebel against the Lord. They don't go together. Amen. You must be submitted to your covering. Amen. And not strive against your covering. So she was loved and covered. Amen. Esther was a beautiful orphan. In many countries, as a beautiful orphan, your life would be in jeopardy. Amen. Without a righteous covering or protection. We hear it all the time. We hear the news and we deal with countries many times. That if you are beautiful, sometimes it's, it's almost as if it wasn't a blessing. It's supposed to be a blessing. It's supposed to signify the inward and flows out to the outward. Amen. That God made a, a beautiful daughter. Amen. But as an orphan, sometimes your life will be in jeopardy without a righteous covering. Amen. So she was covered by Mordecai. Also as queen, she was covered by the royal anointing. I know I won't get to it this time, but there is a, a royal anointing. Amen. The Bible says that God said to Adam, have dominion and authority and to rule. Amen. Adam was the crown prince over the earth. Amen. That his rulership was only subject to that which was of God. Eve was one with Adam. So she was his queen. Amen. Together that they ruled and reigned. Her dominion was no different from Adam's. As long as they was joined, as the Lord has says, he take two to make one. And that authority, which was of the Lord, the devil is a rebellious spirit. He came to try to make them rebel. Amen. He came to Eve first. And so he was trying to get things out of order. There is a royal anointing which is released because we are in the kingdom. There is a royal anointing. It will be as if Jesus is here himself. You say, well, that has happened in the past to a greater degree. That when this anointing is released, the manifestation of Jesus for this cause was Jesus manifested to destroy the works of the devil. There will be a manifestation of Jesus. Amen. There, there will be a royal anointing. Esther, she operates according to that royal anointing. She, she has certain graces. <laughs> she has certain abilities that the man does not have. Amen. That the, the, the wife has certain abilities and graces that the man needs. Of course, Jesus is Lord of all. But this is what the Lord does. He brings us in on his works. Amen. Though we are the weaker vessel, he brings us in. He prefers us. The Bible says. He says that you will have the double portion. That you will do greater works. Amen. And so... Issachar is the strengthening and the coming together of the body of Christ around God's wisdom and understanding, the ability to discern and to know beyond the headlines. Amen. You got to know what to do. There's going to be stuff. There's going to be stuff hitting. It's been prophesied. There's going to be so much stuff hitting. Amen. In this month, the month of September, there's going to be stuff. And around the election, there's going to be a lot of stuff. Amen. Zenda, Patra, Nurte, Kambaruka, Ketando, around the Korrabashata election. There's going to be a lot of stuff. Korrabashata. The church has to be positioned in place. The church has to have understanding. Korrabashata. The church has to know how to operate in an anointing to make the devil bow. Shabaruka, Baba. There's a false truth. Korba. There's a false narrative. Yerboko. That that you are, if you don't go along with that narrative, you are ostracized. Amen. You need strength. You need boldness to stand. You need the anointing of, of Esther. That boldness to stand. You, Esther represents that virtuous woman, the body of Christ. Amen. Esther. Amen. That woman. Shut <laughs> up. The Lord says there's going to be stuff. Amen. Ha. Ha. 
Good. What, what the Lord intended from the beginning shall be in the end. What the Lord intended from the beginning shall be the end. Raboshata. There's a lot of stuff in between what the Lord intended. The Lord is able to carry that burden from the beginning of through the birth pains. Kala. The Lord is able, Rabosha, to give strength to bring forth. To bring forth, you got to take hold with the Lord. To bring forth, the end result which shall bring forth joy. There's joy. About that the man child is born, cut about that type of Christ, that which was that which was intended from the beginning, the righteousness which is of the Lord. Holy God, there, there are things that the devil has planned around the election. Zikoba. Yes. God is trying to tell you that there are things that He has already prepared. In the spirit, we catch up with God. In the spirit. We catch up with the end result. Faith, 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 faith. We walk by faith, not by sight. We walk by faith. The end intended by the Lord. Job went through hell, but he saw the end intended by the Lord. Like the word of the Lord is that I'm preparing my anointed ones and they shall touch the others and that the anointing shall spread upon the others to catch them up. For the Lord is calling us to strength and vigor, the strength which goes with righteousness, which is of the zeal of the Lord, even the holiness, which is of the Lord. The, the, the strength of the anointing is the strength of righteousness and the purity of righteousness is holiness. The, the brightness of that anointing is the holiness and the glory that rests upon you. Seruko, there are things that the anointing is waiting to destroy. Yabruti, Masukuravishakaba, Madorte, Miss Wiprekapa, Ramosiprika Shambukaba, Mando Roshukuba, Nino Rocha Pakata. The Lord says, Don't be Kurbashataba weary, Karabashataba, by contractions. Holy Ghost. He says, don't, don't be weary. Don't be tired. He says, to receive strength. For you shall bring forth. Amen. That, that royal seed. It, it is the royal seed. It is the royal seed. Help is on the way. Help. Help is on the way, Shamba. Help, help, help is on the way. The Lord is our help. Hallelujah. <laughs> Not anemic help. <laughs> you, you don't get it. The help, which is of the Lord. He's going to turn some things upside down. You thought you saw something. Holy Ghost. The Lord, Karobo Shasha, shall upset the foundations of the wicked. Zabrubush. Megabur Devil Sabuka Shamba. Mopa roki shamberuti, mando iselinta bakupra kusha, muda roka shande. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father, for that. Hallelujah. So there's some stuff the Lord says, but He's ready for that stuff. He's getting you ready for that stuff. <laughs> Amen. Praise be to God. Korba sipri kasa, mission de bukurmiki shanderabuko, korabo shanderabu shanderabu sante. Now, Esther was chosen. Amen. The reason that Esther was chosen was because of her inner qualities. We went through some of those things. Amen. That she did only the things that the, 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 the servant that was assigned to her knew that the king liked. Amen. She, she did only those things. Amen. She was not presumptuous. Amen. She was she was humble. She she was she was also wise. Amen. She she was very wise how to do things. When when God would speak to her, she she would know the directions to take. She she would know how how to go about it. Amen. And so that she was chosen. Amen. The Bible says there are many called but few are chosen. 
Amen. That is Matthew twenty-two fourteen, 14. And again, Matthew 20, 16. So the last shall be first and the first shall be last. For many be called, but few are chosen. Amen. Jesus spoke some parables. Each one gives some insight. The, the Matthew 22, it is, it is the parable of the wedding banquet where the man sent out invitations for people to come and they began to make excuse because they were enthroned in the things of the world. Amen. The things of the world was more important to them than the master's invitation to the wedding feast. Amen. And so that's a key. And then in Matthew 20, it is the parable of the master with the vineyard. Amen. He called servants. He called people to work in his vineyard to bring in the harvest on different hours. And then at the end, he paid them a, a day's wages. Amen. And so he called the ones that had only worked an hour. Amen. And he gave them a day's wages. And so the one that had worked that those all those hours they they thought that they would receive more amen and Jesus said that the first shall be last and the last shall be first in other words there there is an anointing amen for these last days amen there are many that have borne labor in the heat of the day but God has reserved things for these last days so there is an attitude Amen. That you should have. Amen. A rejoicing for each one as they receive their reward from the Lord. An attitude of being glad for that anointing upon each person's life. Amen. Because God is not like people. Amen. God is so good. And he makes statements. He makes a point. Amen. He teaches us to show us what's in our heart. Amen. I don't know how I would have responded. Amen. If I worked 12 hours amen, and somebody worked one hour. Amen. That I don't know exactly how I would have responded, but that's what the Lord does. He shows you what's in your heart. Amen. And so that, what am I saying? I'm saying the Lord, he spoke to me five or six weeks ago. Amen. He says that there is an anointing of Esther and Issachar. And that is what the, the, the body of Christ needs for these last days. Amen. And he wants us to release that anointing. The, I, I made a mistake when, when God called me to minister. I, mean, I love to preach. I love the word. Amen. That I may not talk much <laughs> except when I'm preaching. But when I preach, I love the word. Amen. And, and there were a few times that, you know, we ministered in Africa, different places. And uh, in America, and uh, there was a few times, amen, where I did not minister after ministering the word, amen. And it was like it was not complete, amen. And so we always give an opportunity to minister after the word, praise be to God. And so I'll give a closing prayer, and then I'll open up a time of, of ministry. Father God, we thank you for that word. Father, we thank you for your help to deliver that word, Lord God, I thank you. It is that burden, amen, it's, a, it's that donkey between, that strong donkey between two burdens, amen. There's a, a burden associated with the, the, the previous dispensation, the former. Now there's the latter, there, there are burdens that must be delivered, amen. Father God, thank you for your help to deliver, amen, that, that the release, amen, from the burdens, Lord God. Thank you, Father God, for your faithfulness to your word, Lord God. Thank you, Lord, that you're on the move. Amen. Help us to stay, Lord God, with you. Amen. You're on the move. Amen. Help us to, to flow in the Holy Spirit with you, Lord God. Amen. So, Father God, we just bless you and thank you. May this word go forth. May it bring forth fruit. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.